This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. <sighs> My head. What is this? You are no thrall. Vlakith blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. You! Get me out of this damn thing! We have no time for stragglers. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? Try that contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! Pulsing glow and organic lines of the device make it seem more like a beating heart than a machine. Perhaps it will open the nearby pod. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. You feel the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness because you have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. Fair point. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Shadowheart. One moment. Let us make for the helm. We've wasted enough time already. She's right. Lead on. after we escape. Connect the nerves. Nerves! We will connect them. The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time.
sunlight. Your first instinct is to flinch from it and hide in the safety of the shadows. But to your astonishment, there is no pain. The opposite, in fact. Your skin tingles pleasantly, like the caress of a lover who doesn't know any better yet. But beneath the skin, flesh and bone, there is a much more unpleasant sensation. Something nibbles and burrows where it does not belong. The tadpole nestled in your brain. Your stomach rudely announces itself to you with a twinge. Unfortunately, you cannot eat sunlight. Time you found some prey. And of course, you'll be feeding for two now, thanks to your guest. Until it deigns to feast on your brains and split you open to reveal a newborn mind flare. Perhaps it would be wise to focus on finding a cure. As wonderful as the sun is, you can hardly enjoy it if your face rips open. Mm. You're alive. I'm alive. How is this possible? I remember the ship. I remember falling. The nothing. You might want to reconsider calling her a friend. Looks like she ran off without us. First things first. We need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. No, I don't recognize this place. But anything's an improvement on where we just came from. We need each other, and we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. One thing, just before we go. I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. I'll approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. A bit shocked, but friend, it's a relief and a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Nautiloid as well. And I can only assume you too were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. No use sugarcoating it, is there? The inserti we speak of, this parasite, are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? It's a process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most cleric's skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. 
You don't happen to be one of them. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Most excellent. A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Oh, but before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It's an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you. For I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. Get rid of them. He's right. Let's go. We need to check out that blast. You didn't hear it. Shook our camp good, so we came for a look. Northwest. Look for Nettie. Whatever your wound, she can mend it. And be careful. There are goblin traps everywhere. Nymessa, come. Enough gawking. Get me down. Oh, hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. Careful. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. You have made an ally from Kresh Kalir. Few know such fortune. Call me Lazel. I'll trust your judgment, but I won't trust her. Not until I've gotten the measure of her. You've a sharp tongue, elf. Would that your mind proved its equal. Half elf. I suppose the finer details are lost on a creature like you. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! The nine hells! Open the gates! <clears throat> the blade and suffer its sting that was the last of them inside all of you more may follow open the gate well met the blade of frontiers at your sh the man's smile bends downward and his thoughts become yours you are the blade of frontiers racing through the wastes of avernus just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe held high. Uh, hell's great fires. You were on the ship.
Better friends than the ones hitching a ride in our skulls, at least. I'm sure you know the stories. Doomed to shed our skin and become a lithid. They say there's no coming back. But we haven't sprouted any tentacles. Not yet, anyway. Could just be good luck. I'm not so... Your minds collide once more. Will chases the fiend ignited with rancor. She is an infernal war devil. A threat to the living. Evil incarnate. Shit! You saw her. Advocatus Diaboli. Her name is Karlak, an archdevil soldier I swore on my good eye to kill. I tracked her through the hells to the Mind Flayer ship, but the damned Elithids infected me before I could end her. She's out there now, preying on the innocent. I don't kill her, she'll leave behind nothing but a trail of corpses. Just so you know, my first duty is Karlak. I'm oath-bound to go after her, but I won't deny this infection is bothersome. I accept your invitation. The famous Blade of Frontiers in the flesh. Clever, this hero act you've got going. Hero, Blade, name strangers gave me. My friends call me Will. Excellent. If we ever become friends, I'll know what to call you. Question for you. Have you ever heard a Banshee's scream? Mm, for the best that you haven't. An agonizing wail. Loud enough to wake the dead and shrill enough to shatter a golden goblet. I thought it the most terrible noise in all 16 planes. But there's one even more fearsome than that. The doubt in our minds crying out for attention. It's hopeless, it says. Stop resisting. Give up and give in. Doubt is the greatest villain we face. Greater than all the Hell's devils. Greater than a murderous god. Most people don't find it so easy to conquer. It's a good thing for us that we aren't most people. Slay your doubt and nothing can stop you. Not a demon. Not a dragon. And certainly not an illithid worm. I'm glad to see you're not one to give up. The forest. Dark. Cold. Foreboding. Hello? Anyone there? First, thou shalt not drink the blood of thinking creatures. Second... Thou shalt obey me in all things. Where are you? Show yourself! Third, thou shalt not leave my side unless directed. Your heart pounds, but you're ready. He's going to regret coming for you. Fourth, thou shalt know that thou art mine. You swing, but connect with nothing. Do not forget who made you. Do not forget who carved those scars into your back. You are mine forever. Casador, your master. You have to get back to him quickly. If you're late, he'll flay you. Again. What will he say when he finds you can walk in the sunlight, and he can't? And then it dawns on you. If you're free to walk in daylight, can you be free of Casador too? Free of his rules? First, thou shalt not drink of the blood of thinking. Creatures. You drift into the forest, hunting for anything with a pulse. Dance upon the stars tonight. Smile and pain will fade away. 
Words of mine will change. No. Become. Ugh. Change? No. Damn it! No, I'm moments away from a grisly death at the hands of this bloody song. I can't. Nothing fits, you know? Hmm. It can't hurt. I have her. I have an extra loot, if you want. My teacher, Lihala. She loved dancing. Had two left feet, mind. I remember waking up one night on the road and seeing her dancing beneath the stars. A huge smile on her face. Thinking of it now, my heart hurts. And my words just seem to crumble like ash. Wait. Words of mine will turn to ash. That's perfect. Words of mine will turn to ash when you call the last light down. Yes! Yes! <laughs> She'd have said the same thing. That's the first time I've played since Lihala died. My teacher. She was playing her lute. We didn't hear the gnolls coming. There was so much blood. Uh, I can 
can still smell it. <laughs> She'd yell at me for that clunky verse. And make me play till my fingers were raw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Finish the Weeping Dawn. For her. I've a long way to go. But thank you. Uh, I needed this. Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break, hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something. Well, rather important. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. In short, I've grown to trust you. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. The specifics are rather personal, but suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with, though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. No, no, it's nothing like that. Magic isn't a narcotic to me. It's quite literally a lifesaver. I would not burden anyone other than myself with this were the stakes not so high and the means of obtaining such artifacts challenging for a humble wizard to face alone. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact and before we were abducted. It's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital. Dare I say it? Critical. We've already done the finding. In fact, you have one in your possession. You know for yourself how hard one such an item was, and it will be no easier when even more are required to assuage my hunger. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. As do our packs, as a matter of fact. We have such an item already in our possession. Primed for the moment the need arises. I hope I can count on you. By Mordai's eyes, another one. My friend's blood not enough. Come to rip me open too. In Kresh Kalir, a formal greeting begins with a bow. Is this monster with you? Or another gift. Where? On the road to Baldur's Gate, near the mountain pass. S saw us, for we saw it. Jammed its blade through Yul's belly, straight to the other side. No twisting. Kin must have been in a hurry. The map. Show me. You can keep your innards. By the dead gods, are all gifts so brutal? Brutal? Blood still flows through his own veins. 
I was positively gentle. The locals proved compliant. A useful trait. I warned you, didn't I? You ought to reconsider keeping her around before she causes real trouble. A shell so thin requires little to crack it. The teethling was clear. If there are Githyanki west of here, that must be our objective. Purification cannot wait. I am unfamiliar with the... Well, I shall not say culture. Custom, perhaps. You will educate me on matters of this... Fey run. Thought you was busy with the foul bloods in Elson's Grove. You and me both. Gonna find the wizard who gave us the contract that got my people killed. Left out all the important bits, like beware, treasures beneath a pile of goblins. The kind that leaves half your crew dead. There's a wizard in Baldur's Gate that'll pay gobloads for a relic, supposedly buried round these parts. But gold ain't any use if you're too cold to spend it. It's called the Night Song. It's supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you a map of the temple and wish you a happy funeral. But my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own sodger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. All I've got's the contract. Can show you where we turn back, if you feel like dying. As soon as he heard we had a contract to find that night song relic, he was more eager than a hound in heat. When the goblins jumped us, most of my crew scarpered, just like I taught them to. The old codger didn't. Yeah, and I'd do the same again. It weren't my responsibility. If you want to play the hero, go ask the goblins nicely, and maybe they'll give you whatever's left of him. Come on. We're wasting time.